doctor. You might better know him as uh, Ron Paul, the presidential candidate, but he is a doctor by training. So, Dr. Paul, what do you make of this? Well, I think it uh, is not a bad idea to look at over-testing, but uh, I don't think you can deal with over-testing without talking about, you know, the legal and the lawsuits. When you go to the emergency room, believe me, you get over-tested. But it's the threat of a lawsuit that prompts so much of that. Decisions of over-testing or under-testing should be made the old-fashioned way, a decision between the doctor and the patient. So once the government gets involved or insurance companies, when they become the third party, third party payment encourages over-testing as well. And when that happens, then there's a sort of a type of a rationing. The insurance company will ration by making you get pre-approval and, and dictate how you practice medicine. But when the government gets involved, and I think this might be trying to head off the rationing and the concern about over-expenditures. Well, see, that's exactly the, what... Uh, my, right. That was my follow-up question, whether that is what's going on here. And these doctors, in other words, this group is saying, all right, ahead of that, here's this. Yes, I think so, because the insurance companies are very much in bed with the government. You know, when there's negotiations in Washington, whether it's prescription drug programs uh, or health care, the health companies, the insurance companies are very much involved in the drug companies as well. So uh, they're very close to government. No matter Blue Cross and Blue Shield actually started, and they were very, very closely with uh, Medicare and, and Medicaid, and especially Medicare. So, yes, I don't think it's as easy to separate those two but if doctors and the patients had the control and the doc and the patients spent their early money and if they had these medical savings account and they go to the doctor and decide you know on this that's that's who's supposed to be making these decisions not blanket decisions but you know our professional groups I'm I'm, a, I'm an OB doctor if I got a recommendation medically that would influence me in my thinking but uh, I think medicine is much more complicated we have way too much government and the expenses are off one once you pump money into anything, whether it's education or housing or medicine, prices go up and then they start worrying about rationing care. I think that's what's really coming to that us. That would be inevitable, uh, just doing the math. But, it, uh, uh, Congressman, on what the president has been saying about the Supreme Court, about justices and their role, and about being activists and what have you, um, <laughs> I thought strange uh, his talking about uh, uh, political activism one way or the other, but be that as it may. Um, I'm beginning to think that someone has told him on the court he's going to go down on this. I don't know if that's right. But what do you think of his, I wouldn't call it belligerent, but clearly in your face approach to the Supreme Court? Well, it's, it's more than he should be, but that's what the tradition of the presidents have been in, in the last uh, half a century. You know, the presidents too, write too many executive orders. They go to war without declarations. They act outside the law. For them to over, overstep and, and tell the Supreme Court what to do or have political influence, uh, that really is to be expected. This whole question of judicial review should be rethought because in our early history, and Jefferson didn't think a whole lot about it, that if it was a bad law and it was unconstitutional and the states didn't like it, they didn't have to live by it. Or if they didn't like what the Congress was doing and they were doing these things, we were supposed to throw our congressmen out. The, Cong the pre originally thought, it was never thought the Supreme Court was to over have control over every piece of legislation. Just look at the power of one Supreme Court justice. One, one justice can make all the difference in the world on this. Let's say they were trying to do some good and one justice ruled against it and canceled it all out. Well, well, it was that, never that, that have that much Justice power. Kennedy is yeah. in that role, right? Um, let's right. switch to, you know, we had uh, three more primaries last night. Um, you didn't win any of them. Uh, you have yet to win one. You come close in a lot of them, sir. But uh, it's a tough, it's a tough sledding for you now, is it not? Is it, in, is it your view that Mitt Romney is the inevitable nominee now? Well, he's getting pretty close to that, but we, you know, the straw votes aren't the final tally. The tally are the delegates, and we have uh, several states. It's up to six where we can possibly win the uh, plurality in those states and carry those delegations. So, uh, yes, it's, uh, uh, it, it's a challenge, but, uh, you know, we're fighting the lack of coverage that we get. Last night, you know, we had uh, 6,200 show up at Chica at the university. So I looked at it's the Internet crab, today to find out how crab. Yeah. 
I, I looked for uh, a release on this or a, I, an article, so I looked at the Internet and they said, where's Ron Paul? He's disappeared. He's awfully quiet these days. <laughs> of course, we didn't think we were very quiet last night. We thought we had a great turnout. But, uh, you know, uh, we have to buck the trends, the status quo, and the people in charge aren't too interested in hearing the challenges that I have with but, our but foreign you, policy and our your, monetary you're, policy. You're staying in this race. You're not going anywhere. It doesn't look like Duke Gingrich, even though he's downsized his campaign a bit is leaving the race, per se, Rick Santorum, staying on at least through Pennsylvania. So uh, you guys are sticking this through, right? Well, I think that's what uh, the people who support me want me to do because they, they don't think we should quit when we're only halfway through the race. And there's a lot of people working their way through the uh, uh, delegate process, and that takes a while. That might be till June or so before Understood. we but even know what, what has To what end, on. then, Congressman? I mean, it, it, it's a given that you're going to have a, a, a big role at the convention. I think Mitt Romney has told me that himself. Uh, but beyond that, what, what would you want? Well, what I want is a f to live in a free country, and uh, I, don't, I believe we're going in the wrong direction. I think we do more harm to ourselves than any threat from any outside force. We undermine our civil liberties. We're bankrupting our country. Our financial situation is much worse than the people really understand, and we fight wars that we shouldn't be fighting. So this is what I want to change, right. and uh, we're getting the support, especially from the young people, and they're t they don't like what they're getting, and I think we're in the midst of a real serious intellectual revolution in this country, and right. not only because people are changing their mind, but the system we have is failing. I think more and more people are realizing that the foreign policy is a failure, monetary policy is failure, and the Federal Reserve is failing, and this debt crisis is a, to right. a symptom of a total failure. Well, you know, I'm not blowing you smoke, Congressman, but I've covered you for many years now. Um, you're as honest as the day is long, and it's pressing on these economic uh, developments as anyone I know long before anyone else. So you do have a role to play, big role. Uh, Congressman, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.